these women, well, they suddenly had absolutely to urinate. Um, it was a physical response to what they, what he put in in their drinks. And then the man, he took them to the banks of the Seine River and he offered to shield them from view with his coat while he, well, the ladies relieved themselves under a bridge, for instance. And while they were doing this, uh, then the man was looking. Uh, the this is such a humiliating Absolutely. Uh, uh, situation. Oh. And and you would wonder, so you say that this is 10 years. 10 years, yeah. During 10 years. How come this was not revealed earlier? Well, that's the big question, of course. There is a lady who says she uh, informed the two previous ministry uh, ministers of culture, to, to women, by the way, and she never got a reply. So this was going on while well, some people knew it was going on, but apparently uh, some whistleblowers, they, they were not taken seriously. And it gives you an idea about the... Uh, authoritarian or hierarchic structure um, at the Ministry of Culture. It's a very a chic ministry. The people who work there, they, they, they think very highly of themselves. Um, and of course, if you work there, you don't want to lose your job. So probably um, he, he was able, this civil servant was able to uh, continue his actions because, well, probably um, his superiors were not um, they, yeah, and the power balance, in. of course, between of course, these young yeah. women coming then in many cases as, uh, you know, wanting to get a job in the culture ministry and this elderly or at least very experienced uh, high position yeah. uh, official. Uh, so, of course, uh, it's in and, and a, and a very humiliating situation that Absolutely. I can imagine not everyone would like to tell and, you know, I neither go to the police, but even maybe even not tell their, their friends and, you know. Yeah. Colleagues. And maybe they didn't even make the link, you know, because uh, it was quite sophisticated. Uh, you, you, yeah. you, if you have to go to the bathroom, you think it's natural and you wouldn't think of the fact that somebody is doing it intentionally, of course. And, so what has happened now to this uh, civil servant? Well, he has been fired and of course he's now uh, he's going to be charged with uh, sexual assault uh, charges um, and he will probably, uh, well, if there's a court case, he will probably go to prison. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is a... Now it's time to talk some uh, foreign languages. Uh, how many do you speak, uh, Sarah? You're just saying this because you want to show off how many you speak. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say, okay. but I, 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 I do speak at least my, my mother tongue and French and English. Uh, okay. And well, maybe I have some other secret language skills well, then, that you are not aware of. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say how many languages I, I speak or pretend speaking, which is something else. Uh, but, um, you know, the French are not particularly good in speaking for languages. And uh, this has been proven again uh, this month by a study by the EF Language School. Every year they publish the English Proficiency Index, so it tests how well people uh, speak English all around the world, in non-English speaking countries, of course. Um, and France, uh, well, only came 31st. And guess who are the winners, Sarah? You and me. <laughs> uh, it must be Sweden, right? Yeah, well, Sweden is number two. Oh, and, it's, and the Netherlands is one. It's just like the Eurovision Song Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Let's make the Netherlands number one again. Um, so, yeah, the French are not doing really well. But there's one man who's going uh, that to change all that. He's going to get the French higher up the ladder of language proficiency. And that's uh, Giuseppe Fantigrosso. He's the CEO of... No, I don't pronounce your name well. No. Oh, so, so this is one of the languages you don't speak. I actually. do speak. I tell us there, there's, there's an name. I missing. There's <laughs> an O. Oh, well, I, I copy you know, it from you. You can't type your own no, name then. Or admit, well, whatever. I can't Sorry. type my own name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are the CEO of or Play to Speak. Uh, welcome, Giuseppe. Uh, you're Canadian and you also just received your French passport. Uh, your parents are Italian. Your company is based in Spain, but your office is here in Paris. Uh, how, how many languages do you speak? Oof, oof. I speak what I need to speak to survive in the country I'm in. Um, I speak four languages. Okay. And w what are you doing uh, with your company? Explain us a little bit, play to speak. W what is it? Well, uh, again, thank you for having me here. This is, this is outstanding. Um, we simply try to help the average person practice speaking English and maybe later other languages, uh, using virtual reality. Why? Well, yes, there are tons of, of applications out there to learn and practice. What they miss is the, um, the immersion. I mean, if you're not in a contextual place learning, chances are you're going to forget. And then you throw in the culture fear that we have in, in France, Spain, Latin countries, 
And then you got a recipe for people to just not practice. And that's why we came up with Play to Speak. Okay, and how does it work? Is it really like a virtual reality video game? You put on goggles and you see a... I don't think I've ever used the word goggles before. That's a good one. Um, yeah, so so <laughs> you put on a headset, They're yeah. virtual reality headsets. We teleport you to the world we want you to, to be immersed in. We recreated South of England in an animated version, but yeah. we recreated that place. And you talk to our tour guide, Finn, who talks to you about the, uh, the storyline, um, bringing you along to a tour, and he wants you to learn about his city and everything that goes with it. So you start to practice speaking about contextual topics that have to do with you going on a tour. Yeah. And, 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 and this do you person hear is, the, the sounds of the city at the same time? Well, you're in his little cabin next to the water. So you only hear the water and you hear like, you'll hear the seagulls and so forth and you hear the, and do the they fire speak cracking. The seagulls? Yeah. And do, do they speak English? <laughs> no. They speak Seaglish. I don't know what they speak, honestly, but uh, they definitely make some really awesome sounds. And, and you uh, can interact with the uh, Finn, this, this person. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's, that's cool. It, it was interesting because, so I lived three years in Spain, in Madrid. This is when we decided to start the company. And they're, they're scared to speak. And it's not, you know, there could be many reasons. A lot of them is fear of failure, yeah. embarrassment. And what was great about virtual reality was this lady, timid, didn't want to speak, didn't want to try our product. We convinced her, and then she broke the game because she wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> Now, I don't know if there's a stereotype there or some kind of horrible joke. I'm very sorry if there is. But literally, they forget where they are. Yeah. And that's the beauty. You just talk because you don't have anyone judging you. And you're creating this familiar and friendly sort of comfort zone, I assume, within your little virtual reality world. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's all about confidence. I mean, we, you can learn some, some keywords with our program. Uh, you can learn, see how well you speak. But the idea is to put you in a room where you build your confidence and you speak. Yeah. And then as you continue speaking, you start getting, uh, you start improving your vocabulary and you speak better. And does the app also test your improvement? Is there like a, a test or... A not at the moment, not at the moment. Okay. What we do is we do give you a report on some functions that the AI picked up, you know, how fast do you speak or slowly? Um, vocabulary, did you use many different words? Did the system understand what you were saying when he asked you, you know, how are you today? And you reply with pizza. Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> we will advance the story, but the system was said, okay, you know, that wasn't really the answer we're looking for. Yeah. So how well you actually respond and how well the system understands what you're saying. Because some people, <laughs> and it's the best part, they'll talk and you're like, holiday. And you're like, what? <laughs> and the system is like Microsoft will just find a way to make that word into like a text. And they realize, no, I said holiday. <laughs> Why is it not working? And we're like, uh, well, it's because you're not saying it very well. You have to pronounce better. And it's a good way to show you how you do not or you do pronounce things correctly. Yeah. yeah. Now let's go back to the French. So they're 31st on the list of, uh, of countries mm -hmm. speaking English. Uh, Paris is um, doing a little bit better, of course. It's just down cities uh, like Prague and Buenos Aires. Were you surprised when you learned about the results of uh, France, the, the mediocre results? Um. Well, I'm not surprised, but to their defense, the study does say that France has improved over the last three years. So they're moving up and they're better than Spain. So I guess that's always a, a, a metal <laughs> one somehow. Yeah. Something. But yes, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not surprised that they, 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 they do struggle. I'm happy that Paris is really well because that's the center and heart of France. That's where all the yeah. work is. But outside of France, uh, outside of Paris, I doubt it. I doubt it. They speak really well. Yeah. And um, I mean, if you come from a culture of memorizing everything you do in school and learning everything by heart and doing really well studiously, how how do you practice speaking when you don't even learn English from an English speaker? Yeah. You learn English from a French speaker who knows English, but never really practices it talking about it in classes. This is what I found out. 
Now, it might not be like that everywhere, but it's, it's weird. So they don't want to fail. They're scared. They don't want to be judged. And they don't talk. And that so, you, the, so, so if you, yeah. you, uh, you were talking first of, of this, uh, the, yeah, the fear of failure and, you know, being yeah, nervous about speaking in public and all of that. Um, so is, is that the key reason why people uh, don't speak English well? Because there's also the technical part of it. I, I remember when I studied language that, you know, there are some, lang some languages that has a lot of different sounds, for example. Uh, and these languages, uh, people speaking those languages are more, more, well, they have an easier way of, of learning new languages because they can identify different sounds and they can imitate those sounds. So, for example, I learned that Polish, apparently, is the language if you, with the most different sounds. Yeah. Uh, so they have a very, oh. if they, you know, if they want to, they could easily, um, how to say, um, analyze other languages and learn how to imitate them. Um But so do you think that French have a, a technic, technical issue as well with languages or is it really up to, you know, this fear of, of failure and, and, and lack of practice? No, that's a, that's a good point you bring up. Um, I don't think it's one element. We chose fear of failure because culturally it, it's something we can attack and it, it is common. But to answer your question, there are other elements I saw that, that may... These are, this is my opinion, too, with some facts, but mostly my opinion. But I saw some elements that um, in English, when you speak, you hit certain notes. Yeah. It, it modulates. It, it doesn't just stay monotone. They showed the study that in French, it's very monotone. They don't hit that, that high level of wavelength, that pitch where English can hit. So they're not used to saying things at that level. They're not used to hearing And understanding things at that level, and and just these are these are factors when you combine it with everything else that makes it probably difficult for someone to master English just for the fact that French is monotone. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And and if you're not you at the same time, if you're not used to hearing that kind of language Correct. either, because you have you don't have subtitles, you have uh, dubbed movies and, and oh, the dubbed you know. movies, I love the dubbed movies <laughs> and series and, and television. Yeah, but you so you don't it is it, it becomes a sound that's. Uh, not that familiar to you. So maybe that could also make it a little bit more I, I think that plays a part too. And difficult. There's, there must be an element of I'm comfortable, why should I? Mm. And oh my God, I don't understand. This is hard. Yeah. And, and what also is very French, I think, is making fun of each other's accents. When, when a French mm -hmm. person speaks English and it, with a French accent, but even though it's correct English, then the other person, French person, would make a joke about the accent of the other Uh, often in public, um, is, is that also an issue why people don't dare to open their mouths because they're afraid that their colleagues or friends would take, uh, you know, uh, mock them? I find that one of the biggest symptoms of their problems. It's my accent is horrible. They will not understand. The typical English person does not care if your accent is horrible or not. The fact that they're not speaking French is already a victory for them. <laughs> so go ahead, Speak like you gotta understand, you guys. When I say you guys, I'm French, so I'm not allowed. My wife said I'm not allowed to say that. So, <laughs> just for this this insert here, you guys um, study so well. Your schooling, your 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 really high level uh, studious uh, people, like you you go through compared to let's say U.S. or Canada, where um, the education, you know, instead of I would be working, looking for a time job, and you'd be just studying or improving yeah. your study. You know, yeah. like that's just the difference. And you study all this, but you approach language like English in the wrong way. Yeah, almost scientifically and, and not Correct. at all pragmatically. Yeah. It, it's, it's good that you know how to conjugate. It's good that you know how to... Uh, You know all the uh, the verbs and you know as you know the abstract versions of all the words, but if you don't know the context, we speak in English figuratively. Mm. We can say one thing millions of ways. Um, if you don't understand that, and if you don't practice that context, you will always be one step behind, and that's why you need to just get out there and practice, practice speaking. Who cares if you fail? Just practice talking. Yeah. You will pick it up. And that's where you come in with play to speak. That's exactly where we come yeah. in. 
And is, is, is France the second market after Spain that you're attacking? Or? Well, in that study, Italy was pretty bad, actually. So <laughs> okay. I think I should go to Italy, <laughs> personally. 